Shabbata, shalom. Shabbata, shalom. Greetings, everyone, brothers and sisters of Israel and the Gentiles. Hope all is well on this Shabbata day. Hope you're enjoying it. We do have to finish up that 400 year prophecy, but before going into that, I wanted to pick up on those rods of the law that bring forth fruit that we had mentioned in the last lesson. Let's look into that. It's uh, in Parable 8. It says, he showed me a great willow overshadowing plains and mountains, and under the shadow of the willow all have come who are called by the name of Ahaya. And by the willow there stood an angel of Ahaya, glorious and very tall, having a great sickle, and he was lopping branches from the willow and giving them to the people that sheltered beneath the willow. So everybody's up on this tree getting shelter, right? Mm -hmm. And he gave them little rods, being a cubit long. And after all had taken the rods, the angel laid aside the sickle, and the tree was sound, just as I had seen it. Then I marveled within myself, saying, How is the tree sound after so many branches have been lopped off? <laughs> the shepherd said to me, Marvel not that the tree remains sound after so many branches were lopped off, but wait until thou seest all things and it shall be shown to thee what it is. Right. The angel who gave the rods to the people demanded them back from them again, according as they had received them. So also they were summoned to him, and each of them returned the several rods, but the angel of Ahaya took them and examined them. From some he received the rods withered and eaten as it were by grubs, the angel ordered those who gave up rods like these to stand apart. Others gave them up withered, but not grub eaten, and these again he ordered to stand apart. And others gave them up half withered, these also stood apart. And others gave up their rods half withered and with cracks, these also stood apart. And others gave up their rods green and with cracks, these also stood apart, and others gave up their rods, one half withered and one half green, these also stood apart. And others brought their rods, two parts of the rod green and the third part withered, these also stood apart, and others gave them up, two parts withered and the third part green, these also stood apart, and others gave up their rods, nearly all green but a very small portion of their rods was withered just the end but they had cracks in them these also stood apart and in those others there was a very small portion of green but the rest of the rods was withered these also stood apart and others came bringing their rods green as they had received them from the angel and the most part of the multitude gave up their rods in this state and the angel rejoiced exceeding at these, these also stood apart. Mm -hmm. So he finally had some joy when they brung the rods back as they received them. And others gave up their rods green and with shoots. These also stood apart. And at these again, the angel rejoiced exceedingly. And others gave up their rods green and with shoots, and their shoots had, as it were, a kind of fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and those men were exceeding gladsome, whose rods were found in this state. And men were glad. Right. We're glad. We, look. <laughs> look, like, look, we got something to show for it, you know? <laughs> but they brought forth fruit. <laughs> and over them the angel exalted. And the shepherd was very gladsome over them. So the angels rejoicing more. 
And the angel of Ahia commanded crowns to be brought,、mm. and crowns were brought, made as it were of palm branches. And he crowned the men that had given up the rods, which had the shoots and some fruit, and sent them away into the tower. <laughs> Go in the house,、right. in the church. So we continue here in Hermas. He goes on to say, and the others also he sent into the tower, even those who had given up the rod green and with shoots, but the shoots were without fruit, and he set a seal upon them. And all they that went into the tower had the same raiment, white as snow. And those that had given up their rods green as they had received them, he sent away, giving them a white robe and seals. So they to bring it back as it were.、What? They had a white robe and a seal, but they didn't go into the tower.、What? Okay. After the angel had finished these things, he said to the shepherd, "I go away." But these thou shalt send away to their places within the walls, according as each deserveth to dwell. But examine their rods carefully, and so send them away. But be careful in examining them; take heed lest any escape thee," saith he. Still, if any escape thee, I will test them at the altar. When he had thus spoken to the shepherd, he departed. So. The great and glorious angels, Michael, that came and looked, because he's the prince of the host. He gave everyone the rods, which we're going to see. The rod is the law, and he left the angel to. After he inspected everything, he told the angel to watch those that didn't get to come in,、right. and he told him watch us very carefully, so we can understand we're not getting away with anything. Right. Then making sure that this house of Alahayim is well built and perfect. He goes on to say. And after the angel had departed, the shepherd said to me, "Let us take the rods of all and plant them, and see whether any of them shall be able to live."、Mm-hmm. I say unto him, "Sir, these withered things, how can they live? <laughs> <laughs> you look at how bad a case is. How these things go live?" Right. right. He answered and said unto me, "The tree is a willow, and this class of trees clingeth to life." If then the rod shall be planted and get a little moisture, many of them will live. So the willow tree is a testimony in itself. Right. Wow. And afterwards, let us try to pour some water also over them,、mm-hmm. if any of them will be able to live. That. Hmm. I will rejoice with it, but if it live not. I at least shall not be found neglectful. So it's interesting because they said plant some of them back into the ground. That's the dying,、mm-hmm. dying to yourself, and then play some water over them and baptize them and see if they are.、Mm. See if they're going to believe and do right. Right. And bring forth fruit.、Mm. He goes on to say, so the shepherd bade me call them, just as each one of them was stationed. And they came row after row, and they delivered up the rods to the shepherd. And the shepherd took the rods and planted them in rows. And after he had planted them, he poured much water over them, so that the rods could not be seen for the water.、Mm-hmm. So they submerged in it. Right. And after he had watered the rods, he said to me, "Let us go now, and after days let us return and inspect all the rods." For he who created the tree willeth that all those who have received the rods from this tree should live,、mm-hmm. and I myself hope that these little rods, after they have gotten moisture and been watered, will live the greater part of them. So he even understood not all of them will go and get it right, but the greater part of them. And we also see that you have to bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. You have to give it a time.、Yeah. Let's see what they're gonna actually do. That's right. Okay. I say to him, Sir, inform me what this tree is, for I am perplexed herewith, because though so many branches were cut off, the tree is sound, and nothing appears to have been cut from it. I am therefore perplexed thereat. Listen, saith he, this great tree which overshadows the plains and the mountains and all the earth is the law of Allahayim,、mm-hmm. which was given to the whole world. <laughs> And this law is the son of Allahayim preached.、Mm. 
unto the ends of the earth. But the people that are under the shadow are they that have heard the preaching and believed on him. But the great and glorious angel is Michael. Who hath power over this people and is their captain? For this is he that putteth the law into the hearts of the believers. Therefore he himself inspected them to whom he gave it, to see whether they have observed it. But thou seest the rods of every one, for the rods are the law. Thou seest these many rods rendered useless, and thou shalt notice all those that have not observed the law, and shalt see the abode of each severally. I say unto him, Sir, wherefore did he send away some into the tower and leave others for thee? As many, saith he, as transgressed the law which they received from him, these he left under my authority for repentance. Mm. But as many as already satisfied the law and have observed it, these he has under his own authority. Who then, sir, say I, are they that have been crowned and go into the tower? <laughs> as many, saith he, as wrestled with the devil and overcame him in their wrestling are crowned. Mm. These are they that suffered for the law. And we, that's in Revelations where he talks about he that overcome. Oh, right. He says it to all seven of the churches. He that overcome and the different things that he would do for those that overcome. Right. And they all suffered for the law. And it shows us what the devil is attacking us according to. Because right. uh, Revelation 12 and 17 said he's after those that keep the commandments of Allah and the testimony of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. It goes on to say, But the others who likewise gave up their rods green and with shoots, though not with fruit, are they that were persecuted for the law, but did not suffer yet, nor deny their law. So they still had more to do, more growing. Because he said he purges. If you if you bring forth fruit, he purges it that it bringeth forth more fruit. In John 15. They're almost there. All right. But they that gave them up green just as they received them are sober and righteous men who walk altogether in a pure heart and have kept the commandments of Ahayah. But else thou shalt know when I have examined these rods that have been planted and watered. So that even those that just brought the rods back as they were, they were the sober and righteous men who walked all together in a pure heart and kept the commandments of Ahaya. We just didn't go through the affliction. Right. And they didn't have fruit on that. Right. So that shows is this growth that it takes. It's right. it's serious. And it really shows their seasons to this growth. Like these men were good men, righteous, sober, keeping the commandments, pure hearted, yet they still had growing to do in order to be able to enter the tower. So it helps us know we are truly running a race. And even as we see growth and we're building, we have to keep in mind that the journey is not over. Stay encouraged and rejoice in seeing the growth. And remember, we still have a lot more to go to be able to attain unto that exaltation of having fruit to bring forth when we hand our rods back to the angel because we suffered persecution for the name's sake in the fruits of the Spirit. And after a few days, we came to the place, and the shepherds sat down in the place of the angel while I stood by him. And he said to me, Gird thyself with a garment of raw flax and minister to me. So I girded myself with a clean garment of raw flax made of coarse material. And when he had saw me girded and ready to minister to him, call, said he, the men whose rods have been planted according to the rank as each presented their rods. And I went away to the plain and called them all, and they stood all of them according to their ranks. He said to them, Let each man pluck out of his own rod and bring it to me. Those gave them up first who had the withered and chipped rods, and they were found according withered and chipped. He ordered them to stand apart. There's no change. 
Then those gave them up who had the withered but not chipped, and some of them gave up the rods green, and others withered, chipped, as by grubs. Those then that gave them up green he ordered to stand apart, but those that gave them up withered and chipped he ordered to stand with the first. Mm -hmm. Then those gave them up who had the half withered and with cracks, and many of them gave them up green and without cracks, and some gave them up green and with shoots, mm -hmm. and the fruits on the shoots, such as those had who went into the tower crowned, and some gave them up withered and eaten, and some withered and uneaten, and some such as they were half withered and with cracks. He ordered them to stand each one apart, mm -hmm. some in their proper ranks and others apart. Then those gave them up who had their rods green but with cracks. These all gave them up green, and stood in their own company, and the shepherd rejoiced over these, because they all were changed, and had put away their cracks. And those gave them up likewise, who had the one half green, and the other half withered. The rods of some were found entirely green, of some half withered, of some withered and eaten, and of some green and with shoots. These were all sent away each to his own company. Then those gave them up who had two parts green and the third part withered. Many of them gave them up green, and many have withered, and others withered and eaten. These all stood in their own company. Then those gave them up who had two parts withered and the third part green. Many of them gave them up half withered, but some withered and eaten, and others half withered with cracks and a few green. These all stood in their own company. Then those gave them up who had their rods green, but a very small part withered and with cracks. Of these, some gave them up green, and others green and with shoots. These also went away to their own company. And those gave them up who had a very small part green, and the other parts withered, the rods of these were found for the most part green and with shoots and fruit on the shoots and others to altogether green. At these rods the shepherd rejoiced very greatly because they were found so and they went away each one to his own company. After the shepherd had examined the rods of all he said to me, I told thee that this tree clingeth to life. Seest thou, <laughs> saith he, how many repented and were saved? Mm. I see, sir, say I, it is, saith he, that thou mayest see the abundant compassion of Ahaya, how great and glorious it is, and he giveth his spirit to those that are worthy of repentance. Mm. Wherefore then, sir, say I, did they not all repent? To those whose heart he saw about to become pure, and to serve him with all the heart, to them he gave repentance. But to those whose craftiness and wickedness he saw, who intended to repent in hypocrisy, to them he gave not repentance, mm. lest happily they should again profane his name. Mm. Let's just know he sees everything. Right. He knows the heart. We can't fool him. Okay. We can't fool him thinking we can just put on and not truly take this serious. Right. And walk in his ways. So... If we truly want the Holy Spirit, we need Ahaya to find us worthy of repentance, as she is his to give, and he only gives her to them that love him in word and deed by their hearts being filled with his law out of love for him. Therefore, in humility, let us not count ourselves to be of the number as if we have already apprehended the goal of Christ and are chosen. Or let's not compare ourselves with others that may boast in themselves in like manner, nor compare ourselves with anyone else for that matter, besides Christ, who we seek to have formed in us to be his image and reflection in the world, because he is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes 
as he is clothed with the fruits of the Spirit, giving us the standard of the truth and righteousness we need to walk in by the fruits of the Spirit when assessing our own walk. So let us rather speak truth to ourselves in our hearts about where we are in our walk and what we need to do to get to the end goal and be seeking the help from those Christ Yache placed in the church for the purpose of perfecting us unto his full stature. Let's show forth fruits of repentance and love for Allah I am sincerely keeping the law with all our strength, not being ashamed to confess our faults, not letting our sins weigh us down, casting sorrow from ourselves and comforting ourselves when we fall and encouraging our hearts because there's no profit in beating ourselves up about an experience that was actually good for our learning to get better and grow from. Let us be putting our hands to the plow, pressing forward to the goal of keeping the law and bearing the fruits of the Spirit, so that Ahaya may see that we're not stumbling to our detriment, but we're stumbling as we're learning. Our hearts are sincere, and we will get to the point of serving Him with all our heart in repentance, so that He will be pleased to give us His Spirit when our hearts are truly ready. He is patient with us. And wants the best for us. So he wouldn't give us the spirit until it's truly the right time. So in our trust in him. Knowing he will only give her unto those worthy of repentance. Let's keep working patiently. In hope that we may be counted worthy of repentance. And not hypocrites who just have an outward show. But will not put in the effort to change wholeheartedly. Also for our growth and humility in this calling. Knowing that those who don't repent, their hearts unfortunately weren't in the right place. So Ahaya didn't grant them repentance because of the choices they would make in hypocrisy. And he is having mercy to keep them from the opportunity to blaspheme his name again. And on the other hand, they may also be those who seem like they keep struggling. But they will eventually grow out of their weaknesses to become pure and serve him wholeheartedly. Let's truly not censor another, considering our own weakness and knowing we are no better, but rather pray for all men to be grown up in the faith, not judging a person's walk because repentance is truly in the Lord's hands as he sees the hearts. And truly we ought to have compassion and pity on a person who is not walking in the faith in truth or struggling to walk knowing that each has their opportunity to prove themselves to Allah Hayyam. And may one day turn around, and if they don't turn around, it was truly for the best, as it's the Lord who did not grant them the repentance in his mercy, not to let them add to their sins. So we ought to be thankful in either case, and be thankful that we at least have an opportunity to show ourselves worthy of repentance, not looking down or thinking ourselves better than another, and be sure to show ourselves approved by good works, examining our own walk, not comparing ourselves to anyone else, lest we be found hypocrites, and not have repentance ourselves and lose the hope of receiving his spirit for our lack of effort to overcome our own faults. May I be with us as it is essential to overcome the evil works like wickedness, hypocrisy, blaspheming, and double-mindedness, because in the true church, if we be found hypocrites or in wickedness, we will be cast out because Christ's true children will not be walking in any of these evil works. Hence, we're purpose driven to overcome our weaknesses and our struggles to become pure and serve Allah with our whole heart. He goes on to say, Wherefore then, sir, say I, did they not all repent? To those whose heart he saw about to become pure and to serve him with all the heart, to them he gave repentance. Mm -hmm. But to those whose craftiness and wickedness he saw, who intended to repent in hypocrisy, 
to them he gave not repentance. Mm. I say unto him, Sir, now then, show me concerning those that have given up their rods, what manner of man each of them is, and their abode, that when they hear this, they that believe and have received the seal and have broken it and did not keep it sound may fully understand what they are doing. So he asks his question so we can have a clear understanding of what is going on and what transpires with those that actually repent and change, those that don't, so that we may not be without understanding. So he says, What manner of man each of them is, and their abode, that when they hear this, that they believed who have received the seal and have broken it and did not keep it sound, may fully understand what they're doing and repent, receiving from thee a seal and may glorify Ahaya, mm -hmm. that he had compassion upon them and sent thee to renew their spirits. Mm -hmm. Listen, saith he, those whose rods were found withered and grub-eaten, these are the renegades and traitors to the church that blasphemed Ahaya in their sins and still further were ashamed of the name of Ahaya which was invoked upon them. These then perished altogether unto Allah but thou seest how not one of them repented although they had heard the words which thou spakest to them which I commanded thee from men of this kind life departed. But those that gave up the withered and undecayed rods, these also are near them, for they were hypocrites, and brought in strange doctrine, and perverted the servants of Allah, especially them that had sinned, not permitting them to repent, but persuading them with their foolish doctrines, these then have hope of repenting. So this is where people come in, they come into the church and people are already in sins, but they teach them doctrine that helps them stay in their sins. Right, that's what you're talking about, the pastors and uh, the flock. 20, uh, Jeremiah 23. Right, the shepherds that lead the flock astray. Right. Or the pastors, sorry, as you said, the pastors that lead the flock astray. He goes on to say, but they have hope or repenting because it's, you know, they're blinded. Ignorant. They, right. But thou seest that many of them have indeed repented from the time when thou spakest to them my commandments. Yea, and others still will repent. And as many as shall not repent have lost their life. Hmm. But as many of them as repented became good. And their dwelling was placed within the first walls. And some of them even ascended into the tower. Hmm. Thou seest then, said he, that repentance from sins bringeth life, but not to repent bringeth death. Mm -hmm. We've seen the zeal it put in them. Right. Well, Paul talked about that in uh, what is it, Corinthians? He talks about what zeal. Yes, yeah, Second right. Corinthians seven, because if we bring forth repentance, there's a holy sorrow that brings zeal in us right. to do that which is right. That's a true good repentance. He explains in verse ten of Second Corinthians seven. For holy sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Because there's a difference where we're sorrowful because we're sinned and we become just observant to sin. Like, we can't get out of it. We use that as an excuse. You're sorrowful, I can't do it. Right. Well, as opposed to the holy sorrow, which is your zeal that you won't do it again. Right. You go move forward. As he said, For behold, the selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after, a holy sort, what carefulness it wrought to you. Mm. Now you're paying attention to everything. And what clearing of yourselves. Because you're bringing forth fruit of repentance, showing that you're actually sorry by being on God. What indignation. Yea, what fear. Yea, what vehement desire. Mm. Yea, what zeal. Yea, what revenge. So you made up your mind, this is not happening again. Right. I'm not turning back to this. In all things, ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. That's right. This is the same repentance that the angel of repentance is telling her myself. How you see how great repentance tendeth unto life? That's right. Right? He goes on to say, 
back in Hermas, parable 8, in chapter 7 now. But as many as gave up their rods half withered and with cracks in them, hear also concerning these. Those whose rods were half withered throughout are the double-minded, for they neither live nor are dead. But those that have them half withered and cracks in them, these are both double-minded and slanderers. Mm. And all work for the flesh. Mm -hmm. And are never at peace among themselves, but always causing dissensions. Mm. Yet, even to these, saith he, repentance is given. Thou seest, saith he, that some of them have repented, and there is still, saith he, hope of repentance among them. Mm. And as many of them, saith he, as have repented, have their abode within the tower. But as many of them as have repented tardily shall abide within the walls. And as many as repented not, but continue in their doings, shall die the death. And as you touched on this all, the uh, works of the flesh. That's right. It goes on to say, But they that have given up their rods green and with cracks, these were found faithful and good at all times. But they have a certain emulation one with another about first places and about glory of some kind or other. But all these are foolish in having emulation one with another about first places. Now that's all works of the flesh. That's pride. You're right. They couldn't overcome pride. You're right. They wanted to be above each other. Yet these also, when they heard my commandments being good, purified themselves and repented quickly. Mm. They have their habitation, therefore, within the tower. But if anyone shall again turn to dissension, he shall be cast out from the tower and shall lose his life. Mm. That was interesting because they repented quickly. Quickly. But there's no more repentance for that. There That's remaineth right. no more sacrifice for sins. Yeah. As Hebrew 10 and 26 talked about, and as right. we were talking about in the, are you a, a true believer? That's right. Because that repentance, they knew at that point, like, this is what it is. That's it. To go back to it, it's it. Right. There wasn't no coming back from that. Because once you have knowledge of the truth, you know, man, there's no more sacrifice for sins. As it is written. He goes on to say, mm, Life is for all those that keep the commandments of Ahaya. But in the commandments, there is nothing about first places or about glory of any kind, but about long suffering. This is how we know the commandments pertain to the fruits of the Spirit, too. Right. It's but, all encompassed. Yes. But about long suffering and humility in man. In such men, therefore, is the life of Ahaya. Mm -hmm. But in factions and lawless men is death. Seeing as though even a man who is faithful and good, but struggles with pride by desiring first places, stature, or the vain glory in the congregation, or in the world, or getting into dissensions and emulations as pride stirs up these things to men's death, it's essential to self-examine and ensure pride isn't hindering our walk. Please visit the lesson, Walking and Talking in Humility for Edification on Pride, and the playlist for growth within for inner building to purge ourselves from every evil work so that we let nothing hinder us from our goal in christ but they that gave up their rods half green and half withered these are they that are mixed up in business and cleave not to the saints mm. therefore the one half of them liveth but the other half is dead because you can't have the love of the word, can't serve Allah Hayyam and Mammon. Don't love the one and hate the other. That's right. Many then, when they heard my commandments, repented. As many then as repented, have their abode within the tower. But some of them altogether stood aloof. These then have no repentance. For by reason of their business affairs, they blasphemed Ahaya and denied him. So they lost their life. For the wickedness that they committed. Mm -hmm. 
but many of them who are doubtful minded these still have place for repentance if they repent quickly and their dwelling shall be within the tower we want to touch on it keep saying repent quickly it does because we have to do it with haste we said in scripture in uh Sirach chapter 5 says, make no tarrying from day to day. You know, don't add sin upon sin. In Sirach chapter 5, about verse 1 to 7, um, he goes on to say, And if they repent tardily, they shall dwell within the walls. But if they repent not, they too have lost their life. But, they that have given up two parts green and the third part withered, these are they that have denied with manifold denials. Many of them therefore repented and departed to dwell inside the tower, but many utterly rebelled from Allah Hayyam. These lost their life finally, and some of them were double-minded and caused dissensions. For these then there is repentance, if they repent speedily and continue not in their pleasures but if they continue in their doings they likewise procure for themselves death it's interesting it showed the double mindedness come from their pleasures right something they're holding on to right but if they that have given up their rods two-thirds wither and one-third green these are men who have been believers but grew rich and became renowned among the gentiles they clothed themselves with great pride and became high-minded mm. and abandoned the truth. Pharisees, scribes, mm. and did not cleave to the righteous, but lived together after the manner of the Gentiles. And this path appeared the more pleasant unto them, yet they departed not from Allah Hayyam, but continued in the faith, Though they wrought not the works of the faith, <laughs> so they became speakers and That's not right. doers. That's right. They had started out believers doing the right thing, and then the the pleasure and riches and world renown blinded their hearts. Right. <laughs> the 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 feeling of stature and right. feeling like the the exaltation that the people give right. the the to be exalted of men overcame them and they became high minded right. and then they continued the faith but wrought not the works so it shows this group of rods here they knew what the doctrine was but got lifted up by their world glory right. because in high minded they stopped it says they wrought not the works of the faith that's where the high mindedness will cause you to start going away from the commandments further and further because he said that they did not cleave to the righteous, but lived together after the man of the Gentiles. And this path appeared the more pleasant unto them. Because mm. it became the easier road. Right. It would gain the more recognition. Than the right. Than sticking to the gospel. Right. Many of them therefore repented. And they had their habitation within the tower. But others at the last living with the Gentiles and being corrupted by the vain opinions of the Gentiles, departed from Allah Hayyam, and worked the works of the Gentiles. These, therefore, were numbered with the Gentiles. This is amazing. And we went into it earlier that not all Israel is of Israel. Mm. So they became a Gentile. Mm. <laughs> they went away from the circumcision of righteousness mm. in the heart by working that which is right and good and went according to the opinion or the worldly perspective of what was right according to the world because the world is in the hand of the Gentiles mm -hmm. and they started working all works of evil and operating against the commandments and against the fruits of the Spirit. Right. This is a testimony to us indeed, to the Israelites. And we have to come out of these ways. These records are testifying to us continually. And also to the Gentiles to forsake the ways of the Gentiles, forsake the ways of your fathers, and turn unto Allah Hayyam. He goes on to say, But others of them were double-minded, not hoping to be saved by reason of the deeds that they had done. And others were double-minded and made divisions among themselves, 
For these then, that were double-minded by reason of their doings, there is still repentance, but their repentance ought to be speedy, that their dwelling may be within the tower. But for those who repent not, but continue in their pleasure, death is nigh. All right, so family, hopefully you're seeing that living in pleasure or going after our pleasures is detrimental to us in the faith. Because if we continue in them, we're bringing ourselves near unto death. Hence, we encourage each other to learn the things that we have pleasure in that are not good so that we can overcome them and we can pray and work in changing our hearts and not have pleasure in the things that we've been indulging in and overcome them so that we can be saved. Because self-indulgence and taking pleasure in bad works is detrimental to us and will keep us from the healing we need to bring forth repentance. So before going back into the rods, let's touch on self-indulgence so we can understand it and have edification as to why we need to really understand ourselves and come out of our pleasures. In Hermas, parable 6, chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And he says to me, Seest thou this shepherd? I see him, sir, I say. This, saith he, is the angel of self-indulgence and of deceit. He crusheth the souls of the servants of Allah and perverted them from the truth, leading them astray with evil desires, wherein they perish. For they forget the commandments of the living Allah and walk in vain deceits and acts of self-indulgence, and are destroyed by this angel, some of them unto death and others unto corruption. So that gives us understanding to know when our desires and our pleasures cause us to forget the commandments of Allah, that angel of self-indulgence and deceit was at work. And with this insight, we get to see how it is important to understand what we are pleasuring and always remember the commandments and take our time to look into the commandments to ensure that we don't forget it and that angel of self-indulgence and deceit does not get us to fall. Continuing reading, chapter 5, verse 5. We need to understand what self-indulgence really is. As we see, if a person is given over to it, there's no opportunity of repentance for them. So let's look into self-indulgence. Chapter 5, verse 5. What kinds of self-indulgence, sir, say I, are harmful? Every action, saith he, is self-indulgence to a man, which he does with pleasure. For the irascible man, when he gives the reins to his passion, is self-indulgent. And the adulterer, and the drunkard, and the slanderer, and the liar, and the miser, and the defrauder, and he that doeth things akin to these, giveth the reins to his passion, therefore he is self-indulgent in his action. So you see why we need to understand the scriptures, spend our time studying the word, reproving ourselves, correcting ourselves through scripture, and getting an understanding of whatever it may be, whatever action there is that we have pleasure in, giving our minds to the passion of it, causing us to sin, so that we can overcome it, lest we be given over to it and lose our repentance unto life. Here at HRC, understanding these things, this is why our focus is on the inner man, the things that are needful, learning ourselves so that we may come to truly know ourselves, our weaknesses and our strengths, and actually overcome these things and be saved and be worthy of repentance. So Allah will give us his spirit. The angel goes on to say, chapter 5, verse 6, all these habits of self-indulgence are harmful to the servants of Allah. On account of these deceits, therefore, they so suffer who are punished and tormented. Chapter 5, verse 3. He that liveth in self-indulgence and is deceived for one day, and doeth what he wisheth, is clothed in much folly, and comprehended not the thing which he doeth. For on the morrow he forgetteth what he did the day before. So as you see, when living in pleasure, we don't 
keep in mind the things we've done wrong. We forget it and go right back to our pleasures or go on like nothing happened and continue having a tough life because we haven't taken the time to really look within ourselves and see why things are happening, why we're having a tough time. Not understand that Allah is trying to turn us away from our pleasures. Continue reading. For self-indulgence and deceit have no memories by reason of the folly wherewith each is clothed. But when punishment and torment cling to a man for a single day, he is punished and tormented for a whole year long, for punishment and torment have long memories. So being tormented and punished for the whole year, the man remembers at length the self-indulgence and deceit, and perceiveth that it is on their account that he is suffering these ills. Every man, therefore, that liveth in self-indulgence and is deceived, is tormented in this way, because, though possessing liar, they have delivered themselves over unto death. So we see, when things are happening, Allah is trying to show us that we have something we need to overcome. And it takes time, as you see, it takes time for a person to actually come to a realization that it's actually something they're doing that's the cause of why things are going wrong. And when that time comes, that's the time to show repentance and praise Allah for revealing the fault and then put the work in, put the energy into overcoming it. Giving thanks, knowing that Allah is gracious to show us where we erred and wants us to actually overcome the struggle or the pleasure that we have so that we can actually bring forth fruit root of repentance and be found worthy of repentance and receive his spirit and his love for us. So hopefully this is all helpful for understanding and perspective and encouraging to put our hands to the plow and work out our salvation. Let's pick back up in the understanding of the rods in Hermas parable 8 chapter 10 verse 1. But they that gave up their rods dreamed, yet with the extreme ends withered and with cracks, these were found at all times good and faithful and glorious in the sight of Allah Hayyam, but they sinned to a very slight degree by reason of little desire and because they had somewhat against one another. But when they heard my word, the greater part quickly repented, and their dwelling was assigned within the tower. Mm. So that shows how particular it is. Right. You can be doing so well, but if there's any little bit, it'll hinder you. That's what James says, if you're keeping out the whole law. You become a transgressor of the law. Does he that knoweth to do well and doeth not, to him it is sin. That's right. Yeah. He goes on to say, But some of them were double-minded, and some being double-minded made a greater dissension. In these then there is still a hope of repentance, because they were found always good, and hardly shall one of them die. He goes on to say, um, But they that gave up their rods withered, yet with a very small part green, these are they that believe but practice the works of lawlessness. Still, they never separated from Allah but bore the name gladly, and gladly received into their houses the servants of Allah So hearing of this repentance, they repented without wavering, and they practice all excellence and righteousness. And some of them, even suffering persecution willingly, knowing the deeds that they did, all these then shall have their dwellings within the tower. So they partook in a persecution knowing their former sins. As he said, um, he said she was forgiven of much, therefore she loved the more. Mm -hmm. Those who are forgiven of little, loveth little. Right. So remembering what all we're forgiven for, it causes us to be more encouraged to do his pleasure. He goes on to say, and after he had completed the interpretation of all the rods, he saith unto me, Go, and tell all men to repent, 
and they shall live unto Allah For Ahaya, in his compassion, sent me to give repentance to all, though some of them do not deserve it for their deeds. Mm. But being long suffering, Ahaya willeth them that were called through his son to be saved. I say to him, Sir, I hope that all when they hear these words will repent. For I am persuaded that each one, when he fully knows his own deeds and fears Allah Hayyam, will repent. He answered and said unto me, As many, saith he, as shall repent from their whole heart, and shall cleanse themselves from all the evil deeds aforementioned, and shall add nothing further to their sins, shall receive healing from Ahaya for their former sins unless they be double-minded concerning these commandments and they shall live unto Allah Hayyam. but as many saith he as shall add to their sins and walk in the lusts of this world shall condemn themselves to death there we see repentance you have to bring forth fruit we have to put away the sins and not do them anymore or if we continue in it and continue adding we're only working death in ourselves. But do thou walk in my commandments and live unto Allah Hayyam, yea, and as many as shall walk in them and shall do rightly shall live unto Allah Hayyam. So, see, this, this journey is it's, it's easy if we're willing and obedient. But if we are still holding on to former things, it's going to crush us. Your own desires. All right. Brothers and sisters, that was very exciting. Good to get a good, straightforward understanding of this journey. That this this rod, we've all received this law, all them that are called. And we have to bring forth that fruit. We see here, we get to read of how Allah is so long suffering and patient and good. This is the character we have to put on. So we we'll be encouraged with this and we're going to pause it here we're going to pick back up and finish up with understanding how the prophecy of the 400 years is happening again in this time the israelites are being delivered from their captivity from the nation that are subjugating them all right we'll convene back with you shortly i am willing i be magnified i be magnified so HRC, 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 HRC,